All right, how you going, fellas? Merry Christmas. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna go for a bit of a drive down the coast and um, get a burger. And I was thinking I might do a, a walk around of my um, of my car for you as well, just the turbo Gemini. It always runs pretty um pretty rough when it's cold. So yeah, she's lumpy as. Uh, yeah, the one on the right is the oil temp, and the one on the left is the water temp. And yeah, it just takes ages. Uh, nice now, gypsy. Scratching my tint. Yeah, I've got the um, Japanese dash in here. I bought from um, Akira, one of my friends in Hokkaido, Japan. He um, sold, sold me the top of the dash and uh, the vents and stuff on the sides all work. So I've got um, I've got air coming out of the side vents now. I don't know if you ever saw the the door trims I've got on here. Um, I got those from my friend in Malaysia, um, Iqbal Aziz. He found a, a PF50, um, well it's, it's called an Opal Gemini in Malaysia. He found a PF50 with these and I bought them, you know, I just paid him through PayPal. The bottom bits are actually, you know, the Australian ones have wood grain, uh, they have carpet, sorry guys, and these have got like a crosshatch vinyl, and uh, it's actually steel behind this bottom part is steel with the vinyl crosshatched covering. Um, so they're pretty cool. I'm still trying to find some black Rodeo door handles because they're the same as the Japanese models. So I've just got these, I think they're Commodore ones or something, just because they're black and they're plastic. So I've got them in there. But yeah, eventually I want to get, I want to get some um, proper Japanese ZZ type door skins in there, because these are off an early model, you know. Yeah, I finally got my console in. I also brought that off my friend in Hokkaido, Japan. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. I got the shifter. I think I got the I got the shifter off him as well. Um, the shift knob. I think I got that off. Uh, my friend from Classic Asuzu, Mr. Wakashima Kazunori in Japan. So it's, I found a car that was wrecking in Japan actually once um, on the internet. And uh, yeah, he helped me out with that. He just bought the parts directly from the, from the scrap, scrappers and sent them to me. That was good. Um, this is just sitting there. I could probably take it off and show you later on. Yeah, you've probably seen the steering wheel before, but I actually found it on the Yahoo auction site, and I bought it through Jesse Streeter. Um, it was only $160 uh, total, and it's got a few cracks in the top bit, but really, it's minor. 
I would say they're minor cracks. Um, I'm going to look after it now, so it's not really going to get any worse. The horns aren't plugged in. Um, a lot of people ask me about these gauges. Um, I, there's a place I bought them through on eBay. I think it was called Castle Hill Gauges in the eastern states of Australia. Um, Now I just stopped off down at the shops, I thought um, I'd just continue the walk around here and then um, I'm going to go for my drive to get a hamburger and down the coast. Um, yeah, it's warmed up a little bit more now, thermostat's opened. Still only just got to 50 degrees on the oil temp. Um, idles really nicely right you know, now, it's fucking beautiful. I got these things from um, a guy in Washington. Just sits there. Just pulls out like that. Um, it's got the plugs there. My diesel has the plugs for this in the harness. Yeah, it just sits there. It's in pretty good. Yeah, does nothing. Just for looks, man. <laughs> yeah, I turned off. Now, the other newest thing I've got is these wheels. Got them for about 400, I think. Um, with new wheel nuts. Anki Apache 2s, they're like a, re like a remake of the old Apache design, um, so it's it's still old, old school theme, you know. And the stickers, got them off Gromit on Brisbane Gemini. So basically I just showed him a heap of pictures of, of what I was looking for, um, and he found something at work, um, and he cut them down the middle, so they are roughly the right thickness for me. And as you can see, they fade out pretty well. Yeah, close up, it looks like that. Cross hatching. I think they, I think they're about 150 bucks, or something like that. Um, yeah, I've had, I've had the grill for a pretty long time now. I've got another one at home. I actually had this one repaired one stage. It's only just kind of broken now. But, um, you know, it's also missing a bit. If you look at that, it's missing a piece here. Let's look at the other side. See how it's got that big nugget? The sun's just going to bright. There you go, that bit. Doesn't even have it on this side. No nugget. But yeah, you don't notice that when the bond's down. Um, this badge I got also from my friend in Japan, and he's got a Holden one on his car, and that would be the only Holden one in Japan, I think. It's got a really cool clip on the back, which um, it's like a metal clip. See the intercooler in there. So yeah, intercooler piping. Let's go straight through there. Uh, same as the other side. Straight through there. Okay. When I put the, the big alternator in, uh, I couldn't reach my dipstick anymore. You cannot get your hand in there without burning yourself, or well, you can't even get it in there. So I've got a screwdriver. Had uh, Brody 
welded the, um, the original dipstick to the end. Got this little spring on there to, to pull it down a bit tighter. And then it pulls down onto an o-ring as well. Same as the cap. Got an o-ring under there. After um, Paul Dingle Day on Facebook gave us that tip. Does well. Okay, so it's a G180. Can't see that, but yeah, it's a G180 Rodeo inlet manifold. Um, you know, and that's it really. I've got one, one coil down here. Vanilla S1. Yep. Then uh, just make a lead, custom lead to to fit onto the Gemini Dizzy cap. It's got electronic ignition dizzy cap. See? Okay. It's locked as well. See that weld? That's how they lock them. So now it's got no advance, like no vacuum advance and no mechanical advance. It's all controlled by the ECU, so the ECU does it all. Alright, so the oil feed, basically I've got it down here, you can just see it inside of the block. This one here, this one goes to the turbo. That goes to the oil pressure gauge, and then I've and then can't really need to see it, but that's the original oil pressure gauge, pressure switch, and then right down the back, down there somewhere, I've got the um, oil temp gauge. Tape controls the boost. And yeah, we've got the diesel gem radiator. They just swap the, the top tank, they just turn it around and then put the outlets on the other side because um, they need to turn it, otherwise, the cap is right here where the outlet needs to be. So yeah, they take the top off, spin it, put the outlet there and something around the same to the bottom dump two and a half dump um, kind of just touches my heater hoses but yeah since it burnt it I pulled it away and it seems to be alright um, water Goes, you know, there's the water there. Follow that. Boom, gone. Okay, so water T pieces in into one of these T pieces. The other water, this water here, that this one. Okay. That one, see that, and then boom, straight into the block. It's hard to see all that shit. Yeah, it's all in there. Goes pretty good. Um, what else? I think that's just my reservoir overflow see 
still the original cap. Alright, and I moved that thing down there, just, I don't know, I just did. <laughs> Same as those, put them there for some reason. Still get the original mission thing hooked up. That's the only mods I've got to the um intake. See there's a little little kind of a 45 water fitting has been put on the end. Uh, but you can get a whole you know you can get your whole finger there. What are they? 13B injectors, 13B turbo master injectors, um, and I think this is off a Commodore. I think I'm not too sure. It's not the original one though. Um, what else? These things got them off a young guy Andrew. His dad made them on his CNC. So the 13 millimeter. Just look a bit nicer and definitely don't round off. Yeah, there's not really much else to show you guys. I mean, a couple more things. Got the boot popper. So I guess um, I'll pull that. It's not really much in here. Oh yeah. Just got the battery in there. What is this? Oh yeah, that's all my tools from when I went drag racing last time. There, I've just got it mounted with a um, super cheap battery tray and they don't actually they don't actually fit the box box so on this side of I just smashed it down with a hammer flat and then um, bent it up again because it only needs to be 10 mil wider and it all fits in and then I've just got it all you know what I mean Susan Gemini washers from from something I don't know shock washers or something oh. yeah they're the specs shocks I've got oh. mine on the ground here in the car park by myself yeah, you can turn that See if I can turn it. See? Click, click, click. Yeah, you just put them all. I've got them on soft still just because it's more comfortable on the street. Yeah, there's a. That's a Selby's. Sway bar. Um, this one here keeps bending on me, so probably gonna have to get a better system for that. Um, and this side doesn't really bend, but I still can only use one adjustment point with these, but these arms. So I need better arms that let me use all three adjustment points. Um, you can see my exhaust. You know, this has been on the car since I bought it. I think it's a two and a half. Oh, my battery's, my memory card's running out. Yeah, I've got the one muffler there, and then one at the back. So it's pretty quiet. Maybe I can just start it before the battery runs out, otherwise.
Yeah, there it is there. It's like bloody a giant fucking sandwich. But uh, they are tasty. Um, it's pretty windy. So yeah, I'm just uh, heading back now. This is bloody awesome. Turn in the lock diff. <laughs> One-handed. <laughs> and again. Really want to just do a big burnout, but I'm a bit scared of cops. I'll just give it one hit. So yeah, that was limiter. Limiter in second. I really want to show you guys the beach, so I'll see if I can do that. Sun setting. This is hard to park one handed. Oh. Hey, look. 